Welcome to my channel. I've been getting so many requests lately that, as some of you may have noticed, I'm having to make more videos just to respond to all the requests. And I have a couple of requests today that I want to respond to. The first one was from uh, a person who uses the handle Agon1968. And he or she wrote, Do you think you can react and give your insight to the scandal leaked of Cary Lake of Arizona having bri uh, being bribed by a Republican chairman forcing his resignation. And I have to be frank with you, this is not something that I normally would put on my channel because um, in my opinion, it's all kind of murky and it's hard to know what's going on. But I thought, you know, he asked for it, so I'm gonna at least make an attempt. And so what I've done is I've uh, found some articles on it, and I'm going to go through those articles just a little bit with you so that you can uh, get a taste for what's going on. Uh, the basics of it are that a, um, an auto re audio recording of the chairman of the Republican or I guess call him the Republican chairman of Arizona, the chairman of the Republican Party of Arizona, um, privately was asking Kerry Lake not to run for the Senate. And we'll get into a little bit of the, little, little bit of the details there, but um, the, it's kind of an interesting story in a way. So what the heck, we'll go through it. Here's the first article. Audio recording reveals the moment that senior... Republican figure tried to bribe, bribe Kerry Lake not to run for the Senate. An audio recording obtained by DailyMail.com reveals the extraordinary moment when what appears to be Arizona top Republican, Republican official tried to buy, bribe popular firebrand Kerry Lake not to run in the state Senate race. Now, if you, if you don't know who Kerry Lake is, um, she was a uh, TV uh, personality in Arizona, and she ran for governor in the last uh, election and was defeated. But she insisted that there was uh, voter fraud going on, and she's had several lawsuits, all of which have been tossed, um, claiming that there was fraud that took place in Maricopa County. Now, I'm sure most of you are watching or familiar with the, <clears throat> the claims of fraud in the 2020 election, and I'm sure you're very familiar with the uh, favorite uh, media phrase, claims there was fraud without evidence. Without evidence is the claim. The interesting thing to me is the media doesn't look for the evidence. They just claim it doesn't exist. They never actually do an investigation to determine is there any uh, is there any validity to these claims, and if you do an investigation, you'll find there's a tremendous amount of validity to them. And the fact is that more than 50% of the of the nation, including Democrats, believe that the last election was stolen. So despite all of the efforts over the last four years or last three years of the uh, media and the left trying to uh, suppress these claims and trying to claim that they're without evidence and that they're false and baloney, baloney, baloney. <laughs> More than half of the nation still believes it. So if you think about it, that's pretty impressive when you've been, uh, when they've been beating the drum for four years, this is a lie, this is a lie, this is a lie, this is a lie. And yet, still, after four years of that, more than 50% of the people in America still believe that there was a, a stolen election in 2020. And Carrie Lake believes that her election for governor was also stolen. I don't know if it was or not. I haven't really done the research into that. I wouldn't be surprised because Maricopa County is Democrat, and we all know how the Democrats are when it comes to elections. They claim there's never any fraud. They fight for uh, the laxest rules possible. And 
they scream at anybody who claims there was cheating. Okay. So this fellow's name is Jeff DeWitt. He's the chair of the Arizona Republican Party. And it says he can be heard asking Lake, a close ally of Donald Trump, to name her price to stay out of politics for two years. Quote, there are very powerful people who want to keep you out, he says. He tells her in a conversation recorded at the start of March last year. DeWitt tells Lake, one of the most public faces of the former presidential MAGA movement and a woman frequently spoken of as a 2024 vice presidential pick, that's news to me, that he thinks Trump will lose and it's time to make way for someone else. After asking her not to mention the conversation to anyone, he makes his first offer. So the ask I got today from back east, back east, where in the world would that be? Washington. Is there any companies out there or something that could just put her on the payroll to keep her out? <laughs> Laura Lake reacts with in indignation. This is about defeating Trump, and I think that's a bad, bad thing for our country, she says. So then he says, just say, is there a number at which he begins, and she cuts him off, says, that I can be bought? That's what this is about? Okay, now, let me get you the second article because this gets kind of interesting. Uh, the, the GOP chairman has resigned, okay? And... Um, it wasn't because of that recording, because he actually said he was going to fight it, that he was going to fight having to step down. Okay. Let me see if I can find this. Um, in a statement announcing his resignation, DeWitt said he had planned to fight to keep his job until Lake's team gave him an ultimatum to resign or she would release another, more damaging recording. And then he says, and this, this cracks me up, I'm truly unsure of its contents, but considering our numerous past open conversations as friends, I've decided not to take the risk. Now, you know, th whenever I read this kind of stuff, I think, I think that my thoughts are quite similar to most normal, quote-unquote, Americans. I think, why would there be something in there that would embarrass you? Why would there be something in there that would be risky? I'm not afraid to have my conversations, my private conversations revealed because I don't say anything that I am ashamed of. So why is it that politicians are constantly claiming, well, you know, uh, I decided to step down because this would be very bad for me, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Well, maybe you should think about what's in your head. Maybe you should think about what's in your heart. Maybe you should think about being real for once in your life instead of a fake. That's my reaction to him. Now... I don't recall if it's in this article or not. Oh, here we go. Lake, a former television news anchor, has a penchant for weaponizing recordings of her confrontations. She routinely wears a small microphone during her public appearances, while her husband, a former news photographer, records her interacting with supporters, critics, the press, and anyone else she encounters. She sometimes posts videos of confrontational encounters on social media. So, um, these two people, Lake and DeWitt, that's his name, right? DeWitt, I think. Let me see. Uh, yes, DeWitt. Okay, so these two people, Lake and DeWitt, have a private conversation. Lake is recording it. Now, DeWitt had to suspect that she would be because 
apparently that's her pattern. So <laughs> why he would say anything that he would later be embarrassed by is an interesting question, but we'll leave that to the side. Two people were in on that conversation, Lake and DeWitt, and somehow in what, from March to January, so 11 months later it gets leaked. Gee, I wonder who leaked it. It had to be Lake. Who else could it be? Unless Lake shared it with someone on her staff and her staff leaked it, but that's the same as Lake leaking it anyway. So she's pretty much as underhanded as they are. I mean, <laughs> what? Uh, this, you know, the, the whole thing from beginning to end, Lake, DeWitt, the whole thing just stinks of politics. It, it's, it's the same old baloney that we've been seeing for years and years and years. <sighs> I just wish we could get some real people in government, you know, human beings, people like you and me, people who don't talk out of both sides of their mouth. Wouldn't that be nice if we could do that? I'll show you one more article, and obviously I'll put these. Oh, that's. Let's see. Uh, okay, I'll show you another article uh, that I found about the. And of course, I'll put these links in the description so that you can read them for yourselves and make your own mind up because you don't need to take my word for anything. Um, this is an article I found written by a Lori Roberts. And I read several of her articles. I won't give you links to all of them. But I can tell you that this woman just oozes disdain for Carrie Lake and for the Republican Party. So you have to take everything she says with a grain of salt. But uh, she says new evidence shows Carrie Lake's takedown of their Arizona GOP boss was orchestrated. And how does she support the claim? On January 8th, Arizona Corporation Commission Chairman Jim O'Connor, the ultra-grassroots candidate hoping to replace DeWitt, received a legal opinion from the commission's attorney, which begins thusly. It is my understanding that you've been asked to serve as the chair of the Republican Party, Wesley Van Cleve wrote on January 8th. ABC 15's Garnet Garrett Archer snagged the letter, which rates as a bona fide bombshell. Oh, yeah, everything's a bombshell nowadays. I'm so tired of the word bombshell, it should be obliterated from the language. Uh, I get so tired of going, watching, looking at, uh, you know, scrolling through YouTube, looking for videos to watch, and everything is a breaking news, bombshell, you know, um, you can't believe this, that kind of stuff. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, I'm getting off the track. So uh, the, the letter suggests that DeWitt's, now this is her opinion, of course, it suggests that DeWitt's undoing was orchestrated sometime before January 8th, though by whom is unclear, and for whom Lake late Friday endorsed, after former President Trump, Donald Trump endorsed, another candidate in the election denial camp Gina Swoboda, who was Trump's election day director in Arizona in 2020. But given that Lake's recording of her now former friend was a secret until Tuesday, isn't it interesting that a fellow election denier, O'Connor, was seeking legal advice roughly a month ago about whether he could serve both as Corporation Commission Chairman and Chairman of the State Republican Party? <laughs> This, when the party chairman wasn't up for grabs until January 2025. Well, yeah, I'd say that's interesting. Uh, and it, it, it speaks again to, you know, there's, there's obviously shenanigans going on. I don't know what all these people are up to, but um, they're clearly not, you know, they're, they're not people like you and me. They're not normal human beings. They're talk out of both sides of your face. Um politicians i mean what other what other word is there for them they're politicians plain and simple and we don't need any more politicians in government so if i were in arizona i would probably oppose carrie lake 
I don't know who else is running or if anyone else is running, but we'll see. Uh, and this is what Kerry Lake says about DeWitt. He's got to resign. We can't have someone who is corrupt and compromised running the Republican Party. <laughs> uh, you know, when you point a finger at somebody else, you point three or four back at yourself. Uh, Uh, and Lake, Lake's uh, advisor said in a statement on X that the tape speaks for itself, quote unquote, and that no one from the Kerry Lake campaign threatened or blackmailed DeWitt. Well, let me ask you a question. Just think about this logically for a minute. How did that tape get out into the public? Kerry Lake recorded him, so she had possession of the tape. She either shared it with someone else or she leaked it herself. But if she shared it with someone else, she had to know that they would leak it and she may have even asked them to leak it. So, you know, everybody in this situation has dirty hands. And this, this whole situation in Arizona, it's exactly what we don't want in politics. Ex it's just disgusting. Why can't people just take a position, stand on their principles, and speak to the people and convince them I'm the one you should elect because I will not back down? Why can't people just be honest and not be backstabbers? Uh, the whole situation there just stinks to me. I, I'd be, if I was an Arizonan, I'd, would, I'd be upset with both parties. I'd be upset with everybody that's involved in this because they're all, they've all got dirty hands. There's no one clean in this whole situation at all. So that's my take on it. Uh, if you think differently or you have comments you want to make about it, just put it in the comments below. As for my users, as always, I pray that you'll be abundant, that you'll live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy and that you'll Live a long life. And I pray that God will keep you safe from harm. And I also pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.